Okay, so it's May 15. We're at the home of Bob Desjardins in Fort Coppell. Um, present is myself, Cheryl Troop, on behalf of Gabriel Dumont Institute and Calvin Reset. So we'll just start with a few basic questions. Uh, Bob, where were you born and oh. where were you raised? I was born and raised down the valley. I was uh, brought into this world by a midwife. Uh, Grandpa Norbert Rosette's wife. Uh, she she brought in a, a whole bunch of us down there. She was a very very sweet old lady and very nice. And uh, she she was our doctor. She was our our family doctor for years down the valley there for not only for ourselves but. For everybody, that old lady used to go around visiting people in the winter time and in the summer time. She didn't really come to visit the people, but she was there to inspect on the kids, to see how the kids were doing. Honest, this yeah, is yeah. true. Yes, she used to come at a home there, and if one of us sniffled or made any noise or cough or anything. One of us had to go home with her <laughs> to go and get some medicine to uh, to to take to, and and in a matter of a day or two, it was gone. Like she knew every uh, medicine there was in the countryside, and she was the one that uh, uh, I I I never never forget this. I, I've told this story so many times to different people, it's not even funny anymore for me, but uh, it is something that that people could think about. Uh, you know, they talk about years ago, people weren't really that bright or whatever. It's not true. It's definitely not true. Because uh, Auntie Flora, or Grand Grandma Flora, Rosette, one time there she came at home and she said to my mother, she said, have you got any chickens clucking, Florence? And my mother said, yes. And he said, well, I'll trade you some eggs. Because she wanted to change his her, her uh, crop of chickens a little bit too late. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Change the bloodline. So anyway, I and when we were leaving, she wanted me to go home with her to bring these eggs back. And when we were leaving, she said to mother, she said, Florence, how many roosters do you want? And it just stopped me on my tracks. And after that, I, she, mom said, I want three. After that, I sat and I watched that chicken and hatched those, those little chicks. And I watched those chicks and there was three roosters there. <laughs> yeah, so. so actually, you know, the people at the years ago, they weren't that stupid. Uh -huh. They were very, very smart mm -hmm. in their own ways. She knew the shape of the eggs, uh -huh. and she, she, she knew which was roosters and which was oh, hens. <laughs> it was just unreal. <laughs> so but, how long have you been here, Bob, down the fort? Uh, I've been here at the fort since... I, I came down here in 49. And uh, I left here in, in 52, uh, or 53. I went to work in the elevators mm -hmm. with Walter. Uh, Amy Ott, my cousin there. And he... And then I came back here... Well, this was kind of home to me after that. I used to come back here in the winter time. I stayed with my uncle Nat in town here. Oh, yes. My uncle Sam Klein and Auntie Sarah. And uh, and this is where my wife and I met. And uh, we, we got married in 1956, first of December. And uh, we moved away from here. We were, I was working the elevator, so... I took my wife along with me, I bought a trailer, and then after a while I bought a bigger trailer and took my wife with me, and they, we had two kids. 
So after we, we came back here and or to Abernathy and then we moved to Regina for four years. I worked at Ipsco. And then after that, in seventy three we bought this house off my father in law. And we've been here ever since. Seventy three? Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I spent thirty Let's just jump back a little bit. Um, what are the names of your mother and father? Uh, my dad's name was Bill Desjerly, uh, and my mother was Florence. Mm -hmm. she, she was Florence Rosette. And where were they born? Oh, uh, my dad was born in 1904, and my mother was born in. I on that paper there, Calvin. On this one here? Yeah. Okay. I think it should be on there, isn't it? 1913. Yeah, 1913. What do you remember most about them? Well, uh, I guess their kindness was is uh, something that I'll never forget. Yeah, they were very uh, kind to us. And uh, when we needed a little straightening out, well, Dad did that. <laughs> My mother never, never, never uh, laid a hand on us. But if we needed straightened out, and there was three boys, the, the oldest ones, there's three of us, and uh, if we needed straightening out, my dad did that, and I'm glad he did. Yeah. And had they always lived here? Uh, no, no, we lived we lived down, way down the valley for years and years. Yeah, I moved out. I moved out of the valley there. I think I was well. I was probably. Oh, 17 years old. So I lived down there till, till then. Mm -hmm. What about your extended family, your aunts and your uncles and grandparents? Were they always around when you were growing up? Yes, yes. This is where I learned how to talk my Cree. Mm -hmm. My grandmother couldn't talk English. My dad's mom. Uh, I never knew my, my mother's uh, mother. My, on my mother's side, I didn't, never my grandmother and my dad, my grandfather passed away before I was born. But uh, I remember, uh, and then my grandfather on my dad's side, he passed away when he was only 34 years old. And he's buried in uh, south of Altoona at that settlement there. They had a half-breed settlement there years mm -hmm. ago. They call uh, uh, St. Dolphin. There was a church there and a school, and there was quite a few Métis people living there. There was a lake there, Fair Size Lake. Mm -hmm. This is where they all lived around that lake there. All the half, half so, whereabouts in the valley did you live? Uh, down at Katapwa. Katapwa? Yeah. Straight, uh, straight south of Balcaris. Yeah, into the valley, you get in the valley, that's where I live. And uh, Charlie, Re Grandpa Charlie Reset and Auntie Maros, or Grandma Maros, they used to live across the, the bridge from us. We lived on the north side of the valley, they lived on the south side of the valley. And then uh, uh, Grandpa Norbert, they lived just, just a little bit further down. And uh, his family, uh, they were all pretty well, I think they were all pretty well born there, but Grandpa Charlie Reset and them, there's there's a few of them older ones, like uh, right till uh, probably, uh, uh, probably right down to John, I guess. They were born in the reserve. So what was your home like? What kind of house did you live in? Oh, we lived in a log house. Yeah, lived in a log house, and the house was made out of logs and and mudded, and uh, it had a wood shingled roof. Uh, that's what most of the houses were like down the valley. There was, uh, I think, we only had about three or four houses down there that was lumber, and the rest were all log houses. And everybody lived on the, on the, the road lounge until uh, 
years later when uh, Ernie Skinner had bought a chunk of land down there for them to, to live on. Because mm -hmm. everybody that was down in the valley there, they all worked for Ernie Skinner at one point in time, you know. And what kind life. of work did they do for him? The farm work. Farm work? Yeah. Well, I heard a story one time about uh, <clears throat> about uh, Ernie Skinner and how he, you know, he was kind of a mixed a mixed thing. Like he used to, uh, uh, he had all the Métis people living on his land and he'd work them and they were kind of like indentured servants. And he'd, uh, I remember a grandma or said, for example, like all the boys used to work for him. Yes. Uncle Edward and Uncle Bill and Uncle Pete Gollum. And uh, he'd give grandma a hundred bucks a month or something like that, or a hundred and fifty a month in a place to live. Yeah. Sort of thing like that, and that's sort of how it was. Yeah. And, uh, of course, he had lots of land, and uh, he made pretty good money, and he, used to, and he used to set himself up as like an elevator. He bought all the wheat from all the farmers around and uh, held on to it for two or three years until the price went up and made himself a pretty good profit. And, uh, you know, you can say he's smart or he's sharp and all that sort of stuff. But I also heard that, you know, like uh, another story, and I don't even know if it's true, that at one point that uh, they, uh, the farmers uh, tried to bring white people from the old country to be work on the farm for them, farm workers and things mm -hmm. like that. But uh, because they were white people, they had to send the kids to school and cost money. Yeah. and all that stuff and so they figured it would be better rather than uh, uh, doing that they just got the, the many people who they had bought their strip land out from under and, and, and put them on the land and mm -hmm. used them as farm workers. That, have you ever heard anything like that? Uh, I heard I heard a little wee bit about it uh, Calvin but uh, uh, not uh, enough for me to uh, to elaborate on uh, the thing is that I uh, I'll I'll tell you my version of it uh, what I remember of it uh, of, of Ernie Skinner uh, as far as I know like I never did uh, find out or nobody ever told me just how much he paid these mm -hmm. people but I know he used to give them some money because uh, I know Uncle Joe and them uh, and Dad. Uh, they used to have some money, eh? uh, but uh, for one thing, like he uh, he had his own uh, little way of uh, running uh, the whole situation, like the the land, like his, he, he had all these guys working for him, and uh, he fed them all. Mm -hmm. He had uh, he had everything. He had uh, sugar. He had. Uh, 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 Lots of uh, of uh, syrup. He used to buy syrup in gallon pails, and he'd have them. And you can go and get a gallon of syrup off him any time at all. And then he had clothes, like he owned. Uh, I heard, uh, but I uh, I don't know for sure. But I heard that he owned he owned sixty percent of the Army Navy store in Winnipeg. Oh really? Yes. Oh. Him and a, another, a, a Jew, eh? Uh -huh. uh, this Jew owned 40% of the store and he owned 60%. And he used to go to Winnipeg twice a year. He'd go in the spring and he'd go and get all the summer clothes for his workers, uh -huh. like bib overalls right. and work boots and socks and stuff like that, eh? And, uh, and then uh, in the fall, he'd go back to Winnipeg and he'd go and get all this winter stuff hmm. for the boys. He'd get felt socks right. and, and uh, more bib overalls <laughs> and, and all this kind of stuff. But the thing was with with old Ernie Skinner that I uh, that I found out is like my uncle Joe Reset and them uh, out the farm there. They they had thirty one head of cattle. Eh? Mm -hmm. When they moved off the farm there, they had thirty one head of cattle and. Uh, it, uh, my uncle fed the, the, the cattle with Ernie Skinner's mm -hmm. grain and, oh, yes. and all his feed. You well, know. Ernie would know that. Yeah, oh, yeah, he still did. didn't care. Yeah, yeah, he just he he, he more or less uh, encouraged yeah. these guys mm -hmm. to do that, like chickens, eh? And he'd he'd come. Uh, I remember the, this so well. Like he'd come to Uncle Joe's there, 
He'd, he'd wander around the place, all over the place, see, you know. You swear to God he was a spy or something. <laughs> but he went around checking everything, and he'd tell Uncle Joe after, he said, you need some more feed for those chickens, uh, uh, Joe. And uh, you should come down and grind some grain and uh, feed those those chickens, you know. And, oh, he, he didn't mind that at all. Like, and then yet, like I say, he used to give these guys... Not that much money, but mm -hmm. but uh, they did have a very very good living, like the people there. Mm -hmm. Even with uh, the ladies in the summertime, he used to get them to pick Saskatoons, and he'd give them maybe fifty cents or a dollar a gallon for Saskatoons, and he'd dry those, oh. mm -hmm. and he'd keep them for the people in the winter time. Somebody had a bunch of kids. And he say, oh, hey, take these, some of these dry Saskatoon to home, cook them for your kids, oh, you know. And then he used, to, he used to have lots of rhubarb. I remember he had sticks of rhubarb like you wouldn't believe. And he'd cut that rhubarb up and he'd dry it. And then these people would mix that with the Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. And it made awful good fruit. Mm -hmm. Tastes a lot better than a snowball, <laughs> you know, in the winter time. And and it 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 like I say, he he didn't uh, overly pay the boys in cash, but the opportunity was there. Mm -hmm. they, they could they can uh, go ahead and uh, do whatever they wanted, and and which which was something different than some of the other people. Mm -hmm. eh? I remember Uncle Edward when I was a kid. Uncle Edward was so loyal to him. He was oh, just boy. never say a bad word. All, all, all of those older guys in the valley, like all my uncles, Uncle Edward, Uncle Bill, Uncle Pete, they would never say anything bad about him. You no. know, they were no. just the Skinners walked on on water. You know. Yes. Like, yes. And you know, where I was a little younger, and I never got to, I never knew the, you know, the stuff that they would give them a little extra. I could just see the. Yeah. All I heard was the old yeah. cheapskate all the time, yeah. you know, yeah. from the younger guys and yeah. all that stuff, yeah. and how they wouldn't work for that old cheapskate, you know, <laughs> I just heard those sides of the story, say. Well, I remember one time Morris and I who were working there putting up hay, and uh, he paid us two bucks a day. Wow. <laughs> was that good or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, we took it anyway, yeah, and uh, sure. this is back <laughs> in... Uh, the late 30s, early 40s, okay. and at that time a dollar was a dollar, and, yeah. and, uh, oh, and, and uh, he'd never come to hand you the money. He always put your money in an envelope. Oh, is that right? That was yeah. his way? Eh? Yeah, that was his way. <laughs> that was his way. He'd uh -huh. come around and he'd say, hey, put this in your pocket, you know, uh -huh. and uh, if you don't put it in your pocket, he kind of kind of hurts him. Eh? Uh, okay. You got to just take it and fold it up, put it in your pocket, pocket, the way you go, and just right. keep going. Uh -huh. yeah, you can't, you're not allowed to open it there in front of him. <laughs> but uh, he, he had two dollar bills, uh, he must have gathered them for years and years because <laughs> we all got paid a two dollar bill. Is that right? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. On one week there we, we made hay there for about four days I think. I, Morris was working there that time too, as a kid, eh? We were both just young, and, <laughs> and he gave us this envelope, and then when we got out in the field there, we pulled up beside each other, opened our envelopes, checked who got the most money, but <laughs> no way, we were both paid exactly the same amount, and in two dollar bills. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a real well, that's... That's one thing we had too, lots of deer meat at home, because my dad was a very, very good hunter. I used to laugh at old Cannon Skinner there. Uh, first thing in the spring, my dad would go out and first flock of ducks come in. Well, we had to have a feed of duck the first thing in the spring. Eh? So Sunday morning was the best time for my dad. He'd go out there early in the morning, boom, you know. And Cannon Skinner used to tell his wife, apparently, yeah, we heard later. Oh, Bill Digley is going to be eating duck for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> he knew who it was. Do it, uh, <laughs> yeah. <see>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bill Digley is going to be eating yeah. duck for dinner. He said, just shot. <laughs>
but years ago those guys they, they all hunted like I I sat on that uh, committee there that tried to get our hunting rights right. there years ago mm -hmm. here and uh, they talked about the Métis people slaughtering uh, animals you know heck my dad and all the, the people that lived down the valley down there they all hunted year round none of them ever had a license mm -hmm. and those deer were always there they knew who which one to kill if there is a, a, a doe out there with no little ones, well, he had he had to go because he was eating up stuff that a good <laughs> doe should be eating. Eh? Right. So they'd butcher, and all those guys watched, like especially Uncle uh, the real hunters down there was Uncle Harry Putra and uh, Uncle Rennie and my dad. Randy oh, Amiot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Man, he was Rennie. a storyteller. Oh, Uncle Rennie used to love hunting. Mm. I used to go out hunting with them lots of times. And <laughs> we'd get out there, and as soon as I'd get, I'd chase the, the animals to them. And him and Dad and Uncle Harry would shoot them. And by the time I get there, they got it, got them pretty well all skinned. Right. They, they'd get four or five of them, eh? mm -hmm. And then what we'd do, after is we give it away and mm -hmm. we only kept maybe a hind leg for ourselves you know the rest all went out and as soon as we run out uncle harry would come along or uncle rennie say well boys come on we gotta go hunting today <laughs> and then uh, the game warden really shocked me one time is he came down there and his name was joe laroque he came out with Brett. GZ? Oh, yeah. The same guy? Okay. Yeah, GZ. he was a game warden down there. Uh -huh. And he came down there one time, Calvin, he stopped at Dad's there. He went visiting everybody. And he stopped at Dad's and he told Dad, he said, Bill, but he told him in Cree, eh? Bill, he said, you got to go out hunting. He said, the old people are hungry. That's they want some meat. He said, huh? they need meat. And he said, if, if anybody's coming this way, any of the cops or anything, he said, I'll make sure. He said, like, get you. I'll get in touch with you. Let you know. That's all right. Let that you know, he said. So he would look out for the community. Yes. Yeah. He was a half breed yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he, he looked after mm -hmm. the community. And in the fall, uh, he'd come and uh, he'd tell Dad, you know, you better go and get some more ducks there, you know, because... <laughs> Those old people, they need some ducks. And he looked after everybody. And, wow. and it was uh, really great uh, for Dad because <laughs> he, yeah, the game warden was <laughs> helping him out, you know. And, and uh, But even though, like, the game warden told Dad he can go ahead and hunt, he never, he, he never got any more than we needed. No. Never. Never. And these people are so scared to give the rights to the Métis people because they're scared that the Métis people are going to slaughter the animals. No way. They've been hunting all their lives, those people, and, and they can't tell me that they're going to do something different now. If they were going to slaughter animals, uh, that would have been done a long time ago. Kids. What about school, Bob? Well, the school... <coughs> I, I started school when I was about seven years old. I went to uh, Tipperary School. Up the top of the hill. Up the top yeah. of the hill. Eh? Mm -hmm. And we had four miles to go to school. Eh? And uh, it was pretty hard in the wintertime. My dad, uh, we had my, my cousin Stan Klein used to drive us to school. And he used to come and get us in the wintertime. But in the summertime, well, we used to walk. And it was, it, I had a real rough time because when I started school, I didn't know that much English. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was so used to talking my own language, and my grandmother was with us, and uh, she didn't talk English at all. So we had to talk to her in Cree or talk in Cree, and uh, so. 
we didn't, I didn't know that much English when I started school. So it was a kind of an uphill battle right from day one. But I managed to go to school till I was grade eight and then I quit and went to work. Yeah. So yeah. I spent, uh, I went to Tipperary and then we moved down to uh, the Bill Stephen farm on top of the hill there at uh, Como Park. We, we lived there in the middle 40s, 40, I think 43 we moved there. We stayed there 43, 44, 45, 46, and then we moved back in 46, back down the valley again. And uh, I went to school at Saltone School. And then uh, when I when we moved back uh, down the valley, I went to Catacua School for two years. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to Tipperary again after. And that's, that's, that's where I... I stopped my education there. <laughs> I um, had to go to work. <laughs> the stories in like sort of our history books and things we've learned sort of said that Métis people weren't allowed to go to school legally until 1944. Yeah. That's when the provincial government assumed responsibility for the education. But I know like uh, I uh, talked with Brother Jerry and yeah. And others, my mom and them used to say they, they went to Katepa school and stuff yeah. like that. And it was always at the goodwill of the teacher, you know, sort of thing. They yeah. could stay and they could go. And so they had a hodgepodge of education. Like I know Uncle Edward went one day, they said, and didn't like it. He never, ever went back. And yeah. he hid in the hills for three months. I think it was you who told me that story. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't go back to yeah. school for love or money. And they thought yeah. he was at school the whole time and he was hiding and yeah. stuff like Funny. that. Finally, uh, they stepped on me and said, okay, you got to get to work. So he went to work, and he worked right till the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he worked for one guy, Ernie Skinner, Ernie all Skinner, his life. All his life, yeah. All his life he worked for Ernie Skinner, Uncle Edward. But, oh, he was... And, you know, I grew up, it's like, thinking all the time, like, I know they talk about, well, I can never remember a little church in that valley, but our people were all religious. Oh yes, and, uh, oh very, you know, very, very. And I, I drive along and I think there's this, there's this little white building on Freddie Brown's property. Yeah. And I said, somebody told me once that they thought that that was an old church at one point. Yes, it, it, it was. was. It, that yes. was okay. Yes, that was our church. That was the church. Oh right? yes, okay. I served mass in there. Uh, the really? Oh yes, I it, went to catechism there. That whole building is not any bigger than your living room. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the whole church. <laughs> uh, it, it used to hold about twenty, twenty-five yeah. people. Uh -huh. But it it was quite a quite a thing. Like uh, uh, the man used to sit on one side of the church, and the ladies on the other side. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know what the idea was, but that's the way it was. And uh, and every, I, what I remember so good is my aunt uh, and and grandma Reset uh, Cocomeras. They used to sing a Cree song. At, uh, at midnight mass, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and that's the only time that song is sung there. They never sing it any other time. There any? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a special song that they used to sing. And when I took those people down there last summer to go and show them where all these people live, right. and uh, I remember where all the houses were, and I and I drew uh, little sketches of these houses and uh, told them whether they were logged, you know, and whatnot, right, yeah. and drew the shape of them. And uh, all those uh, people, they never missed Mass on Sundays. And they all came to that church, and then after Mass, they used to sit in the, in the summertime, they used to go and sit in the bush there, and they'd bring lunch, and they'd sit there and have a picnic every Sunday. Hmm. And the men would go and sit in the, in the shade there, and they'd play cards. And then the ladies used to go and sit in the shade there and, huh. and uh, visit. That's a and, long haul, too. 
right from that corner, that crossroads corner there, that'd be about three, four miles. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... Oh, yes. Right. And, and uh, heck, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, it's another oh, two miles, no, no. another mile for Uncle Rennie and them. For sure. And then it was another mile for uh, George Klein and them. Right. And, and, and Fred. And old Fred, and old yeah. Fred, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she probably had the closest, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's where we lived originally. Right, that was yours. Right yeah, yeah. Right yes. on the yes. corner. Yes. Yeah, I remember walking over there as kids because they had kids my age. I'd go over there and yeah, yeah. and hang out. Yeah, there. yeah. That's where we. Were, that's where yeah. I was born. Is there right any, there, yeah. Oh my stars! Right on yeah. the corner. Yeah, right there. God, I can remember old Fred telling the stories when our kids used to tell us. He was the biggest BSer in the world. Eh? <laughs> How he'd tell us, on, he'd say he used to tell us about. Oh, I chased a deer up that hill. He'd say, and I waited till it got to the top. He says, Oh, it's so far away, and I'd shoot it. And he says, and then it would fall down the hill and roll, and it would skin itself in, on the rocks on the way down. So I never had to skin it, you know, and things like that. Eh? Or he'd go hunting prairie chickens and he'd get, wait till they're in the trees and stuff and then he'd walk around and around and around and all of a sudden they'd break their own necks watching him and stuff. You know, things like that. It, and we used to believe him. He was so... <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. my. Yeah. I don't know. Wild stories. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it entertained the kids at that time. That was uh, our, our entertainment. <laughs> I remember years ago when I was small too, you know, you talk about different things. Uh, old uh, uh, Uncle Rennie's dad, old Isidore Amyot, and uh, he 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 was a like the stories he told us. They weren't they weren't uh, tales at mm -hmm. all. They, they were true stories. He told us he was uh, fourteen years old when he left Winnipeg. Uh, and he was running uh, four oxen on a wagon, pulling a, a, a wagon load of flour coming west. On the, on the, the trail? That yeah, was on right the along trail. the valley there. Yeah, yeah that, that Fort trail. Dallas Trail, isn't it? Yeah, 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 Fort yeah. Dallas Trail. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, he drove a four, four uh, oxen huh. and, and brought that flour down here. And then uh, he said he didn't go back. He didn't go back, though. He, he stayed here. He found some Métis people living down here, so he stayed here. And uh, him and two other boys, his friends, they were 16 years old. They, they had, there was no horses here, no wild horses okay. around here either. They were all chased away by buffalo. On account of the buffalo here, the, the horses didn't stay. They, they left. They went way west. Anyway, the the, the, the way uh, Grandpa Isidore told us that the three of them they walked into the states. They knew the the Indians there had a bunch of horses, so they went down there and they stole. <laughs> stole a bunch of horses and brought them back. And one of his his buddies got shot and killed. All right. Well, they're yes. stealing horses. Yeah. Is that right, eh? Well, yeah, he told us that story. And he was 16 years old well, at the time. Hmm. And the time when he told us that, he, he must have, he had to be 90 years old. How do you remember all the who was related to who? Oh, oh, I, 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 you have a, an amazing memory of that, and I know you're always, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. who this person was and who this person was yeah. and who they married and who their mom yes, was and all yeah. that, like that stuff. Yeah, well, I grew up down there, uh, Calvin, and I, uh, I still kind of do that. <laughs> I still never lost it. Yeah. any of my touch and <laughs> finding out who the people are, you know, like. I know all my neighbors here, <laughs> personally, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I make it a point to get to know them. I, right. I don't uh, don't stand in the corner of my yard here and hope to God they come over and come down. <laughs> I don't wait for that. I, I just walk across the street or go down the back alley and go to the, the people and, and talk to them right. and get to know them. Do you remember that from when you were younger? 
um, all the families getting together and visiting and socializing. Oh, yes, and yes. What types of things would you do? Well, uh, our, our biggest, uh, the, well, the things they did was they had a lot of dances. They used to entertain themselves in dancing, eh? And they, they had lots of parties. Uh, Good fiddle players? Oh, boy, there was lots, lots of fiddle oh, players. Mm -hmm. And lots of guitar players. Heck, you, you, ten guys would walk in the house, and all of those guys, there would be a fiddle player and a guitar player there for sure. They were that plentiful down the, there, right? down the valley down there. Like my own family, like my mother's family there, eh? There was my grandfather, Uncle Henry, Uncle Stan, uh, Uncle Toby, and uh, Uncle Tommy. They all played fiddle. Huh. The whole works them. And Jimmy Pelshi, I hear, was one of the best. Oh, yes, he, he was, was a good fiddler. He was a good fiddler, yeah. yeah. He was a good fiddler at one time. And he just passed oh, away. Oh, Fred Fine. Fred was good, too. Fred Fine was good, too. But, uh, like, I talked to a lot of people, and, and my cousin Walter, he, he was great for going to parties and jigging. He yeah. was a pretty good jigger. Yeah. And uh, he told me so many times, and every time we talked, together and talk about dancing and whatnot. He always talk about my Uncle Henry. He said, that man, he said, can play the fiddle. He says, I could step dance to his music. And he said, no effort. But with Fred, I have a hard time. He oh. said, he, he makes me sweat, he said, <laughs> to try and keep up uh -huh. to his, his fiddling. But Uncle was a different kind of a fiddler. Fred Fine was a fiddler that played and uh, didn't really care about uh -huh. the, the, the dancers right. that much. But my uncle, he knew exactly how fast to play that, that fiddle or how, how fast to play that tune that you could dance. You know, I hear that still, you know, people that are dancers, dance groups, they said, oh, that one's a hard guy to play, to dance to because yes. he just plays. This other guy feels what the dancers are yeah, doing, yeah, and he yeah. can play to them, and he can gauge them, and he plays, he, and, he, and he matches his fiddle playing to suit their dancing style. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Things like that, I've heard yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll watch that, that dancer, and that dancer, uh -huh. he knows that dancer is going to change steps, so he right. changes yeah. right. uh, changes his, uh, uh, his tune, too, you know. And between, uh, he said... With Uncle Henry, he used to just love dancing hmm. with Uncle Henry's music because he said he knew exactly how to play. Very so, what kind of dances would would happen then? Like what kind? Of oh, they they danced all these old dances uh, like uh, the drops of brandy and the duck dance and the rabbit dance and the ha handkerchief dance, the square dancing, like the 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 first change, second change, breakdown. You know, there's three mm -hmm. different. Uh, deals in square dancing. Uh -huh. you know, they start off with a slow uh, dance, which they call the first change. Then the second change is a little bit faster, and then they call the breakdown. Well, that one's really fast. I used to call square dancing when I was 12 years old. Yeah, I used to call square dancing down the valley there. We used to have dances on Sundays when our folks all went away. The whole works of us would get together in one place there, and we'd get Uncle Edward and, and my cousin Stanley Klein. He'd come play the guitar, and we'd, we'd dance. I don't know Uncle Edward used to try and play a fiddle. He wasn't that good, was he? Who? Uncle Edward. Oh, he, he was good enough. He we, was we, we, really we, yes, we used to dance to his music. I know when I was a, yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I was a kid, oh, yeah. he was older. He'd play a little bit, but he used to say to me, Oh, boy, he'd like to have a, he'd like to have a drink every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Then he'd say, Make me feel kind of funny, that stuff. Make me want to sing old Canada and do a little jig, he'd say. And then he'd go, go get out his old fiddle. And he'd want to play old Canada all the time, you know, like, jeez. <laughs> you know, he, he, he used to be uh, uh, really great for jigging, too. Oh, you know? really? Oh, I never yes. did that. No, oh, yes, he was a good jigger. Oh. oh, heck, I remember one time there, New Year's Eve, or New Year's night, the, uh, after they went around visiting everybody, they had a big party there at yeah. uh, uh, Grandpa Joe Cardinal's thing, okay. down the valley down there. And uh, 
Uncle Edward showed up there and he was half <laughs> And uh, you should have seen him. Had his felt socks on and holy Jesus. Just the kitchen. Oh, he was just strapped. He was just, he was just giving her. And oh. God, uh, him and, uh, I, I never forget uh, old Frank Cardinal. He was uh, Morris Cardinal's daddy. Okay. Oh, boy, that guy. But he never was serious, eh? Like, he was always fooling her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my dad used to, used to tease him, you know. And when he was dancing, you know, he'd be dancing. And uh, other guys would be jigging there, too, you know. And dad would holler at him. Come on! Constantly tell him, you know, what he'd tell him in Korea. Come on, Mokuzak, we know Chihi Kwak, he tell you know, they're going to beat you, eh? Uh -huh. And oh boy, then he talked loose. That <laughs> 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 oh always talked about that. He used to laugh. But oh, Frank, then after they finished, my dad used to compliment him. Hey, you know, oh, you beat him, you beat him. He knows you how he said, you know, you beat him. <laughs> We used to talk about competitions, you know, like uh, we, we now sort of like, uh, I read, I read lots still, you know, read yeah. lots of history stuff and yeah. and sort of people talk about how there always used to be jigging competitions and things yeah. like that and how right at the drop of a hat sort of thing, there somebody would get up and do a step and then somebody would get up and match them and this yeah. was the kind of stuff that would go on all night. Oh, yes. And then the best, oh, yes. they said when it got to the point where there'd be a tie. You know, you couldn't yeah. choose between two guys, sort of thing. Yeah. Then they'd make them do a step with a cup of water on top of their head. Is that true? <laughs> or, you know, well, they they yeah. used to have some kind of a, a, a thing like that. Yes. Yes. They'd say they put Sounds. a cup of water in with us uh, on top of their head, and the one who spilt the least at the end of it was the winner. Yeah. Is that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, serious. Yeah. That was true. Oh, that was serious that kind stuff. Of stuff. Yeah. Oh yes, but uh, different dancing like. The ones I, I seen here one time was Auntie Emma and uh, Uncle Louis Cardinale. Mm -hmm. They were dancing the drops. Yeah, oh, the, really? drops, the drops of brandy. And you should have seen them. Yes, all right. Oh, it was just, oh, that that picture, I could just see it uh, yet, you know. Uh, they're just, just like they're just floating around, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how they dance together so well. Eh? Yeah. God, he, there was nice. And old grandma, uh, Coco Maros, boy, I'll tell you, she was great. And she knew how to dance those dances. You no, know, I never ever seen her dance. Is that right? Never, oh, no. I seen her. I seen her lots of times, Calvin. Boy, she used to be good. Oh, so, uh, grandma was a real plant woman, eh? Just yes. And, uh, uh, I remember years ago there when they were living down the valley there. You'd go there, that that whole bottom there, Kelvin. That used to be all garden. Yeah, you know? I remember that. Yeah, yeah, they they used to have had a screen house there. Yeah, yeah. That, now all that whole bottom there on the north side of the building there, mm -hmm. where the barns were there, yeah. on this side of the barns there. That was all garden. It did. I. They probably put in the better part of two acres of garden every wow. year. Wow. And uh, Grandma used to have everything. Like there wasn't a thing, uh, like she used to have uh, cantaloupe and all uh, watermelon. Oh, yes. All those things, eh? So all the kids liked her, eh? Washed and, oh, <laughs> Lord. And, 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 boy, they used to have a great big garden. And carrots, oh my lord, they used to have carrots. And they used to have about an acre of potatoes in because they, it was a big family yeah. and they they, uh, they needed uh, lots of vegetables. And turnips, oh god, they grow, grandma would grow turnips like that, they, you know. I guess oh, that's when I was a kid, my mom used to grow a big garden too, same yeah, reason. Yeah, 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 same thing. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. Thing. yeah. Turnips. And we we had like we had a big garden too, eh? Uh -huh. Like there was uh, four of us in there, five of us actually, and uh, we we grew a big garden. Uncle Edward, he always used to come at, at home there, and uh, one year there we had the garden along the coulee there, eh? 
And uh, old Ernie Skinner came and he said to, to Dad and Uncle uh, Edward, Edward, he said, you, you worked that corner up there for Florence and Bill. He said, they won't put a garden in there. So Uncle Kim worked it all up. We put in a garden in there. And that summer, Uncle Edward used to stop in our garden and, well, everybody kind of helped themselves to the garden <laughs> stuff at that time. We didn't steal anything, we just, just took it. Eh? Uh -huh. And uh, we, we had cucumbers in our garden. They must have been about 16, 18 inches long and they were about two and a half inches in diameter. Eh? And uh, he, he always used to tell the story that he picked up a cucumber there one time and he went up to Uncle Joe's for dinner and he gave this cucumber to Auntie. He said, here, he said, cut this up for dinner, he said. So they had dinner and there were six of them there and he said they had a hard time to finish that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that cucumber. That's how big it was. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 He always used to tell us mm. different things. But, yeah. but with Grandma, though, and uh, she had a real good touch of, uh, of flowers, and uh, that's where my, actually my mother uh, got to grow in flowers okay. too. Was, was uh, on the counter. Yeah. Grandma. Grandma. Well, I remember when I was a kid. You know, I used to there on Sunday. We used to go around like people would come from miles oh, around. There'd Jesus. be as many sometimes as two hundred people there at her yard on Sundays. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. And uh, yeah, everybody went out visiting the old yeah. people. Eh? Yeah. That was uh, like New Year's, New Year's morning. They'd all go to grammar and sets there. Yeah, at, uh, I remember that too. Four o'clock in the morning. Can you imagine somebody, about 60 people walking mm -hmm. in your house to uh, four o'clock in the morning to come and have breakfast? <laughs> Good night, you mm -hmm. know. I'd kick them all up. <laughs> Jeez, that, that was, that that was the night. tradition. Yeah. God, I remember Uncle Uncle John used to eat snuff too, and he'd put it up on the counter, you know, yeah, up, up in the shelf. I used to, I was just a kid. I used to watch him. Yeah. And then I remember one time he wasn't around. I figured I'd give it a try. I thought he swallowed it. Christ, I threw up. Oh God, I was sick. He just laughed at me because he knew what I did. Eh? He just laughed at me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're talking about yeah. that now. It reminds me of a story. One time we we were playing hockey on a Sunday. Afternoon, here's Uncle Edward there. He digs in his pocket and then makes a bite of that chewing yeah. tobacco. Eh? Oh, God, that looked pretty good. I said to him, I said, geez, Uncle, can I have a little bit of that? Sure, he says, make a bite. <laughs> make a bite. And I, I didn't know either. I swallowed something. Oh, my <laughs> Lord, I just about <laughs> died. I went home. I couldn't play anymore. I was so sick. <laughs> I crawled to me all the way home. <laughs> I got home. My mother looked at me. <laughs> I guess I was just green. <laughs> so, oh, I was sick. And then she, she uh, that was fine. I went and laid down. I went to sleep. I slept for about an hour. I guess I woke up. Well, you feeling better now? She said. I said yes. He said, uh, what did you have, a cigarette or chewing tobacco? <laughs> <laughs> I said, how do you know? He said, just the way you look. I said, I know. <laughs> Uncle Edward, oh, I said, gave me a chew. And I must have swallowed something. <laughs> well, he said, you won't have any more, eh? I said, don't wait. And I never <laughs> did have after that. <laughs> that was, cured me right away. You know, I think of Grandma too, and I just think of, uh, you know, on her house, in her house, you know, that little house along that whole wall, she had all them birds. Remember them birds? Yeah, I yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I like, remember them. To this day, I don't know, like, your little ornaments, eh? Yeah, those yeah. Little ornaments that she I, collected She them. collected them, and, like, I had no yeah. idea what they Everybody, everybody gave her. Yeah, people yeah. used to bring them for yeah, me. Yeah, like they, people used to come down there and bring her these birds. Yeah. To hang on her wall. Because I can remember as a kid, those were her most precious things. Oh, the birds, yeah. eh? oh boy, the birds were something. Yeah. But everything was was uh, 
you know, uh, at that time, uh, there was really no sickness, not like today, you know. That time there was no such thing as heart attacks. No. No, no, no uh, cancer, stuff like that, you know. Uh, well, I don't remember any of that either. No, 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 no. Well, of course, my mom died of cancer, but... She but was yes, sort of, that was the rare thing, you know. Was, yeah, yes. Okay. And and the thing was, uh, you see, when when your mother passed away, there, uh, all those, all our 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 doctors were all gone. Then, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah, if they were gone. around, I'm sure they they would have probably been able to help her. Uh, yes, yeah, because it was all well, doctors, then, eh? yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that uh, them old ladies there. And it was kind of, it, it, it was a re, real fortunate that we had such a person down there, right? We never went to the doctor um, town or nowhere. Well, we had to go all the way to Valcaris or all the way to Indian Head. And, heck, down the valley there, you know, and nine times out of ten, you had no way to go. My dad was out working with using the horses. We had no, no way of traveling. You know, a lot of them were, they had a team of horses, but they were using them for work. And uh, so with Grandma there, it was just, <laughs> the doctor was in our backyard. <laughs> and and then uh, everybody helped each other, you know. Everybody was, uh, well, like they were all related. You know, but that was the thing. Yeah, I was all. They're, yeah, they're all related. All those resets, they're all, the whole works them were all related. They're all cousins. Oh, yeah. I, I was asking one time, uh, I asked Uncle John, I think, you know, where did my, where did Grandpa Charlie come from? He said, come from the States. That's all that he said, you know, and, uh, well, you see, they could have, they could have, uh, Calvin, uh, I wouldn't say uh, they didn't because mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a lot of them in in Turtle Mountain. That's, you know, that's there's lots of Maggie yeah, yeah. there in Turtle Mountain, and <clears throat> I got a tape here. It's called Medicine Fiddle. Uh -huh. uh, it comes from Turtle Mountain, right. and there's a, a there's there's a guy there playing the fiddle, and I know God darn well he's a Maggie because he. He's playing the fiddle and kicking the floor okay, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So he's got to be me. There's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. Because 99% the, the of them do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like old John Arcan does yeah, that. Yeah. You know, they all do it. Yeah. Like my uncles and uh, the whole works of them. They, they make their own bass with their, with their rhythm, their feet. Oh, that's what it would be for. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that, they had no drums or anything. Yeah. So the, that was part of the drummer. What about the stories of uh, about Métis history, like about Louis Riel and Gabriel Lamont. Did you ever hear those when you were growing up? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, when, uh, when uh, Cardinals lived on that, that house where my grandfather lived, on top of the hill there, I was told by that lady that just passed away here, Mrs. Henry Butra, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. she was a cardinal. Eh? Right. She told me that Gabriel Dumont stopped there and stayed there overnight at one time when when he was on his way uh -huh. to Batosh. And uh, and my uh, my uh, uncle used to talk about that too. Eh? He 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 met him. He met Gabriel Dumont, but they never, they never did, uh, met. Uh, nobody talked about Louis Riel like, uh -huh. as much as they did Gabriel, because Gabriel s did stop and, and visit them here, and probably picked up some troops here. Too, yeah, probably yeah. is what the, the reason why he stopped. I imagine mm -hmm. because you see, one of my dad's uh, uncles is buried in Montana. Oh, okay. He got killed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, initially. Yeah, yeah. They didn't uh, really talk that much about about Louis, but 
they they did. Uh, I've heard mentioned of uh, Gabriel Dumont. You know something else also. You grew up in the the, the era that never gets written about, the Romance era. Yeah. You know, and how our people were sort of excommunicated from society and marginalized and not a lot. And there's lots of stories, of, like, you know, you hear people refer to Tokyo and Little Chicago and yes, things like that. Yeah. You know, those are many communities, like people yes. lived on a road lawn, say, and they mm -hmm. had little tar paper shacks. Yes, yes. You know, that's what they say. And yeah. Like, where was Little Chicago? And, like, oh. Tokyo was around Yorkton, I think. Yes, yes. One was around Lestock, too? Was that? Yes, there was yeah. one around Lestock there, too. There was lots of Métis there at one yeah. time. That's where they took all those Métis from there, and they loaded them up in a in a in a train right. and took them up north. And the minute they left the, 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 with the train, those guys went around and burnt all their houses. Uh -huh. So they, they took them to Green come Lake. Back. To Green, to Green Lake. Lake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they took them to Green Lake. Yeah. I heard it was uh, J Z who organized that. Is that right? Uh, help the help the government. He could have helped the government. Uh, it was a liberal government, and he helped them uh, organize, organize the people to relocate. Very, very strong, and he was like, well, he well was paid for it. That's you know, that's sort of one of the. Yeah, that's yeah. why I think a lot of people don't want to talk about it because yes, of yes, so the the hard feelings, the hard feelings. And I heard also yeah. that uh, uh, some the Fontaines are connected into that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are lots of hard feelings. Yes. Yes, there's lots of that yeah. stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to scratch it. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. nobody wants to that's, scratch it. That's our it's, way. It's, yeah. It's uh, just kind of swept mm -hmm. under the rug and walked away. You know. So many of those things had happened uh, through the, 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 the years, uh, Calvin, they, you know, uh, like. <laughs> The guys talk about, uh, you know, oh God, they said, that, you know, things are hard, you know. And uh, how, uh, one guy one time asked me, he says, well, how is it for you guys? Uh, Bob, he said, yeah, do you find it hard? I said, well, I said, we've been in it all our lives. I said, I don't know when it started or when it's going to end. Yeah. It's always the same, eh? It's always the same bloody thing, I said, for us. Mm -hmm. I said, it's never changed. I said, we, we've been up, uphill all our bloody life. We've never been downhill. Right. We've never went downhill. I said, we always up uphill all our lives. And I said, we're still going uphill. Today yet, I said. And and the thing was, you know, like, you, you, you think back of all the things that the Métis did for these white people years ago, and yet they turned around and, and hung their, their leader. Yeah. You know, that's what really, really bugs me, you know, to think, you know, somebody somewhere, someplace is going to be really ashamed of that. Mm. Because how the hell can you live your life knowing that you did so wrong? It's as far as to kill a man. But years ago they said, uh, you know, I, I don't know, you probably read uh, something about it through your reading there, uh, Calvin. And when they, when they were in the Red River, they didn't dare stray away by themselves or, or they never came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those guys got them. Mm -hmm. The soldiers? And yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there was, I, I, I didn't really realize till not that long ago that there was 30,000 Métis people in Red River at one time. That's why the, 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 those British got really scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a lot. Because they, they, they outnumbered them by... Uh, 20 to 1. 20 to 1. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And this was the the reason why they they they, they started hunting them. Yeah, yeah, you and that's and that's the reason why you find all those Métis people that moved out of the Red River settlement 
came out of there in groups. That was the reason why. Because they didn't dare come out by themselves. Because they knew damn well what was going to happen. And that's why you found Métis people, you found them in groups. And I, I find it uh, today, like thinking about it, and I, I think, you know, well, I guess there's a reason why they traveled all together. Because if somebody was after me out there too, I, I wouldn't want to be alone, <laughs> you know. And and I guess all the the families, the cousins and the uncles and the aunts and, and the grandmothers and the grandfathers, they all traveled together as a, as a group. And some of them came. See, they chased them all out of out of out of uh, the Red River settlement. They were all chased out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's the reason why they left. And it isn't because they left on a, on their own. They were chased out of there. And some of them went to the States and then came back this way. Mm -hmm. The Blondos were the same thing. Mm -hmm. See, the Blondos went through the States, through uh, Turtle Mountain and came down. And some of them stayed right there. You see, the lady that did our family tree for us, for my family tree, I got my family tree too, mm -hmm. the Deshley family tree, but mine only goes back to the 1600s. And uh, <coughs> and he, she was saying that about 70% of her family, or is her husband's family live in, in uh, Turtle Mountain. You know, I remember uh, horses too. Like everybody always had a couple of horses, eh? yeah, riding horses yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. like, oh yeah, that was the thing. One yeah. time there, all those young boys, like Uncle Bill and Uncle John and Peter Fine and uh, Freddie uh, uh, Patra, and oh boy, they had nice horses there. Riding, you know, oh, riding. Yeah. racing. Yeah, they go to church. <laughs> you know, they'd come to church with their horses, you know, show off their horses, you know. And, uh, oh yeah, there was lots of that. And, uh, like, when they, had, when they had weddings, my dad was great for that. He used to make these fancy things they used to put on the horses. Okay. They were just like a, like a ball. Wool. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, and he'd put uh, it's like a scotch top or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd make those and put them on the horse's oh, head right, here, right. and that horse would bring his head and these all these little colored, different colored ribbons right. on there, and, and they used to decorate horses like that when they have a wedding. Right. Like instead of a, now they decorate a car. Well, right. that time they used to decorate the horses, and then they used to everybody used to. Oh, that guy's got a good team of drivers. We'll get him to come and <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> take part in the, 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 the wedding so ceremony. It was yeah. Like renting the limo. Yeah, yeah. renting the limo. Yeah. 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 That's right, you got it. That's <laughs> renting out of the limo. Oh, my. Anyway, uh, Uncle Renny used to have a good team. My dad used to have a pretty good team, too. My dad participated in a lot of them, but. Uh, how my dad used to participate, he was the guy they used to get him to make these these ornaments for right. them. Eh? Okay. My dad was good at making those. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, uh, and then when they'd get to a place, they always fired the shotgun two or three times. That was his tradition. Hmm. <laughs> when, when my sister got married, that time in Abernathy, right in town, when they pulled up in front of the hall there, my brother John was at the back of the hall there. He fired two shots with the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> the old tradition, eh? And you should see my dad. My dad's eyes were about that size. <laughs> oh, the heck is that? I bet you it's John. Where's John? Where, by the way, he knew who he was. Yeah. Well, I laughed. 
Dr. John standing around there, it's like nothing happening. By this time, you're going to hit the shotgun and right. <laughs> everything. But uh, that was a uh, tradition. Mm. I remember years, years ago, their Uncle Bill uh, at uh, Eddie, Eddie Putra's wedding, Uncle Bill was standing on the hill there, and the horse, and these guys, the horses were coming. And before they get too close, they want to shoot yeah, because yeah. they don't want to scare the horses. Right, eh? right. So I guess Uncle Bill does know winter time. It's Uncle Bill got a little bit of snow in his shotgun in the barrel. He shot boom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know the way oh, yeah. in that, that picture show yeah. you see yeah. old funny there <laughs> with his shotgun blowing up well, in the end. Yeah. Well, it was like that's that. what happened. Yeah, right. that's what happened. Uncle Bill shot gun. It's so much for that one. But uh, I remember that so well. Right. And uh, oh, but there there was lots of little things that happened. And one day before they'd eat the wedding dinner, they always get somebody to come and sing in French. So my dad knew four songs that they sang at the wedding table. See. And this is the only time they sing these songs, do we? In French. In French. Not yeah. Cree, not no, 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 not, not what's in French. Ah, huh, interesting. Yeah, and they'd sing this, these songs. Hmm. And uh, Frank Feint was another guy that used to sing at uh, wedding tables. Right. Too. Hmm. Yeah, my dad, he sang a lot stuff. He sang in Uncle Bill's wedding table. Yeah. I remember well, yeah, yeah. Cheryl asked you a while ago, we went from there about, you know, what were some of the things you guys used to do, sort of get-togethers and things, because I know, like, you know, horseshoes was always a big thing. Oh, yes, yes. Horseshoe yeah. tournaments, lots yeah. of play, lots, lots, lots of cards, you said, you said oh, cards. Oh, lots of cards. And those old guys, every Sunday, they used to all go down to Grandpa uh, uh, Joe Cardinals there, and they'd go and play cards there. Eh? And then, um, even in the, the winter time, what would they play? Not poker, eh? Well, yeah. Yeah, poker? Yeah, they played poker. But, you know, this was all, uh, I think the limit was 10 cents. Oh, right? I see, so it was Yeah, it and was. Poker. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just poker, something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's to, it kind of, it's an entertainment right. to, for themselves. Right. And then the, the other, the, the younger guys, like, like the guys, uh, like George Patra and Walter Amiot and late brother John, those guys were a little older. They'd be playing horseshoes over there. Then they have a bunch of kids over here, they'd have racing for peanuts and hmm. then they'd have uh, the kids, they had, uh, they'd go and hide these darn things and, and they have to go and look for them, eh, you know. And just keep the kids occupied. Eh? Hmm. And we used to have a ball, ball diamond there. Uh, just on this side of Uncle Rennie's there. Well, we used, they used to play ball there. Uh, temporary district there, they used to come down with a team and uh, Uncle Rennie and them, uh, uh, they had a ball team. Okay, made me think of another story about uh, the fiddles and Lent. Is that true that I hear of Lent? Yeah, yeah. Well, Irma was telling me about uh, old, uh, yeah, they, Clifford. <coughs> you see what they did? Uh, Calvin is. They started their parties New Year's night, mm -hmm. and they'd have a party the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth every night. It then someplace, mm -hmm. and then that was it. Everything was put away till after Lent. Is that right? Eh? Yeah. You know, I heard stories that they used to say, oh, the priests used to go around and confiscate all the fiddles at Lent. And no, uh, no, 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 that wasn't, that's, well, that's not in my time, I anyway, see. maybe before yeah. my time, but not in my time. No. In my time, they, 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 the, the people themselves, they, discipline they, just, themselves, yeah, yeah. they disciplined themselves. Yeah. yeah, they'd party for that whole week. From New Year's. Yeah, yeah. from New Year's till the 6th. Huh. And, uh, and then after that, everything's put away, everybody. No more parties till after Lent. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What about at Christmas? What did you do at Christmas? Christmas wasn't uh, a very big thing uh, for us down there at Christmas time. New Year's was the, 
our our celebration time. Now Christmas wasn't uh, wasn't uh, that much at that time years ago. I can remember when I was a kid with grandma's just small and Christmas yeah. time you got a pair of socks on your supper table and that was it, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. was stuff yeah. for the yeah. Christmas yeah. present that was it sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right about New Year's, but yeah. I remember the oh, people, New Year's oh, people did celebrate yeah, New that. Year's. Yeah. They'd celebrate New Year's and I did celebrate that for six days. And the midnight yeah. mass was a big thing. Maybe. Oh yes, midnight yeah. mass, everybody yeah. was there. Everybody with the dog yeah. and their dog, yeah. yeah. I also I remember a church white beat yeah. jam right full. <laughs> Skinner, Ernie Skinner. I think it was Ernie Skinner. I'm not sure. He used to have something called a like a big bombardier. He'd drive around and check on families in the winter to make sure that they were looked after. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I, I often remember that. That I remember on Saturdays. He'd come and pick you up and take you to town and stuff like that. Yeah. I was just small, though, but you know, I can remember riding in this. I was scared of it. Eh? It was like a big tractor, like it was like a skidoo, eh? Yeah. Like a big tank, and it had tracks on it. But I can remember riding that thing. I was terrified of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was, was him, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was him. Yeah, old Ernie Skinner, like down the valley there, like if you seen a car, well, you know darn well who it was. It was Ernie Skinner, but that's the only guy that had a car <laughs> down <laughs> in the valley. <laughs> well, around there yeah. for miles. Nobody else huh. had vehicles. He was the only one that had a vehicle. Huh. Yeah, you see in a car, oh, there's Ernie Skinner, no doubt. Hmm. No doubt at all it was him. But he, he used to go around before Christmas and check how many kids you had, you know. And he used to give presents to it. Hmm. He'd send presents over with Uncle Edward or, or somebody. Or he'd, he'd tell Uncle Edward, Tell Bill to come down there, I want to see him, you know. And, and my dad would go down there and holy jeez, he'd bring back a bunch of stuff. And he all, every Christmas, he used to give a, a nice, nice little Christmas cake or, or, or a box of chocolates to mm -hmm. the ladies, all the ladies, mm -hmm. like Auntie Claire. Yes, sir, yes, it is. Yes, 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 he was, uh, so, you know, like, uh, a lot of these guys that, that said, you know, that they didn't like them, you know. And a lot of those guys, I don't think they really cared that much for work anyway, uh -huh. to they start off with. Lots hey. of sour grapes. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you know, I, I'm not going to work for that old cheapskate, you know, he only gave me hand dollars. But uh, little did he know that he got uh, $50 worth of groceries or, or $100 worth of clothing, eh? Yeah. You know, they forget about things like yeah. that. But he had his own little ways and mm -hmm. and uh mind you, uh there wasn't too many of them around that way, but but he had quite a system. He had quite a system. Mm -hmm. And he made sure like Calvin can vouch for that. None none of them that worked for him boy ever went hungry. No, no they never, way. never spoke evil of him. I know, I know. No, I, no, I, God, no, nobody ever. They're boo. Never yeah. say boo to I know, I used to try and question that, because, you know, I used to look at it cynically when yeah. I was in university <laughs> saying, you know, yeah. here he used my family as cheap labor, you know, and they worked <laughs> their guts out for him, and he, yeah. he paid them poor and worked them hard, and he yeah. made a million bucks in the backs of my family, you know, like yeah. that's the way, way I tried to look at it, but yeah. see, nobody talked about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nobody would no, want, didn't no, want to say nothing. No, about. that's for sure not. Not that no. way anyway. No. There was lots of, of things that went on down in the valley there amongst all those Michi people eh, that I, I, I would sure like to see brought back hmm. into this. Like the visiting party. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. That's that that we lost all that, yeah. you know. Like this is the first time Calvin ever come to, you know, to his house. Yes, coming to my house yeah. here, and yet we're we're related. Eh? Yeah. And uh, it's it's just too bad, you know, that things like this go. Mm -hmm. But everything is going so fast now. A days, it's yeah. Everything is kind of left behind me. The things that matter, we forget about. Eh? Yes, yeah. yes. What things that that really matters mm. is 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 all gone. Like those people, like the, uh, the, the people down the valley there. 
when they used to go to church on Sundays, especially in the summertime. Eh? They'd sit there and they'd, they'd, oh, they'd laugh and laugh. You can hear them a quarter of a mile down the valley, you know, laughing and, and talking, you know, all having a, a real good time. And uh, now it's, that's, that's gone. Hmm. It's gone. You, you see your relatives once a year. Well, it's a year. Not a funeral. You're lucky. Not a funeral. Like I, got, I, got, I got cousins in Regina on my dad's side. I haven't seen for three, four years. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them more than that. It's 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 terrible. But and yet they they grew up down there too. Right. Uncle Pete used to live just a little ways from us there. Then Uncle Sam used to live there. Mm -hmm. And there's three houses there in a row. There. In that corner, hmm. yeah. Yes, there was three houses there. Yeah, but that, all that is is all lost. And what you know, I think you you make me think of something. I, I think of the about the, when I was of course I was born in 1952, and I was just thinking when I was a little kid, I could remember all well you you were older and all the all the uncles and every. Everybody worked in elevators, you know, they all... Yeah. And I sort of looked at it old when I got a little bit older, and I said, geez, you know, all, everybody, the whole entire, every elevator in Manitoba, Alberta, and Saskatchewan were built or painted by a crew from the valley here. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's we the way all it was. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, and I, and I know that Archie Bartonson, for example, yeah, oh, that yeah. contractor out of Winnipeg, made a lot of money. Oh boy, we lots of money. We, we made him rich. We made him very made rich. Him rich. And I think of, you know, uh, I tried to sort of analyze that and tried to look and sort of said, well, why did that come about? And I, you know, sort of my interpretation was, I said, you know, like in during the war, there was a lot of guys went and fought in the war. Yes. And yes, then after well, the yeah. war, they came home and there was nothing. You know, yeah. and I know there was a lot of uh, industry, tractors, combines, yes. all that stuff just boomed. Yeah. And the threshing crews and all that yes, stuff was gone. was gone. Yeah. And so these people had to find something to do. Yes. And they had no education, and mm -hmm. so this was something that they could do. Yes. And yeah. that became the source of our way of life for, yeah. you know, yes. 30 years, 40 years? Yes. yes. Pretty much. I would eh? say so. And, and the thing was, at that time, too, uh, Calvinists, the farmers didn't pay anything no. too much. You right. know, you're lucky to get maybe five dollars a day. And how we went and worked in the elevators. Well, Jesus God, we were knocking out three bucks an hour, four bucks an hour. Eh? So that was good money. Yeah. That was a lot better than being on the farm. Eh? So that's where, that's why, a lot of us mm -hmm. went yeah. that that route. I remember oh, lying. Oh. I, I was 14, and oh yeah, he's 16. You know, lie to the compensation for it or whatever, race so I could get signed up to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but then I got there, and of course Jerry was my boss, but he wouldn't let me go up on the scaffold. He yeah. made me paint the outhouse and all the buildings, and he yeah, made me yeah. scrape the walls. And oh god, I'd be the gopher. Right? Yeah. We'll get the pop and the yeah, water. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Poor paint, Miss Pale, tied on a rope. <laughs> That sort of stuff, yeah. but it was a it was a, it was a it was a ground where I could rub shoulders with the men, you know, and yeah. Learn, yeah. lots of yeah. things, you know. Yeah. Learn how to work hard. Yeah. Learn how to learn how to, learn to respect stuff, and then give them the take. Eh? Yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was a thing. Like years ago, I remember when it, when we were working, you know, God, we used to work hard. But when we played, we played hard too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we 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 played hard and worked hard. I remember even at those summers when I was a you know the kid out there, six, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, like about yeah. three, four summers, we'd go out there, and you know, and on the weekend you said how the families used to get together. But yeah. We have this pre-arranged signal up. For we got paid every Thursday. Yeah. So Thursday we cleaned out the fridges for groceries. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of beer Thursday night to stay, <laughs> and uh, we used to work half a day Friday. Yeah. But nobody would go to work hardly. But uh, and I know Jerry used to get mad at us because we'd be too hungover. <laughs> and uh, so he'd uh, do things that he could do, like he'd repair yeah. ropes, check ropes, yeah. clean the yeah. sprayers, you know, things like that. Eh? Yeah. And then, but we'd all get together. Then on the weekend, we'd all head for uh, a certain place, like at the Bow River. 
yeah. three or four or five different crews have come and meet yeah. there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd hang out there for the weekend and yeah. party and yeah. visit and socialize. So that's what we used to do with, yeah. with the other, yeah. like when we were up north, eh? Morris and I and, and uh, uh, a couple other crews there, we oh God, nice Sunday we're going to have a wiener roast on the lake, you know. And holy jeez, we'd go down there and be. 25, 30 of us there, yeah. you know, and oh, have a good time. A wiener roast, have a couple of drinks, go back to work Monday morning, you know. Oh, jeez, work like slaves all week and then <laughs> go now a wiener roast or something in the weekend. Why would people always have nicknames, Bob? You know, I grew up like all my life, a crepe here. I was laughing, I was telling Cheryl we were having dinner, you know. I said, Bob's wife is my first cousin. Her mom and my mom were sisters. Yeah. All her life. I asked Bob last year, what's your wife's name? <laughs> I knew her. Like, I never knew her name was Bernice. All her life, it was Goose, Goose. Everything was yep. Goose, you know? Yep. I just, and yeah. why would, oh, like, yeah. why, I, the, to this day, like, everybody had a nickname. Everybody. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's just the way it was, I guess. And, you yeah. know, then you start looking at their, their Christian names or their... Their yeah. real names, and most of them were named after some saint. Some yeah, well, oh yes. yeah, from our oh yeah, from our Catholic like, like with me, I'm Joseph. Oh, that Joseph. Well, how did you get Bob? Well, Bob is just a nickname. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that's that's a nickname. Okay. Wilbert is my real. Name. That's right too. Wilbert. Yes, yeah. that's right too. Joseph Wilbert is Joseph my Joseph Wilbert. Yeah. But uh, I was known better as Bob because <laughs> my <laughs> uncle called me that when I was a kid. Very. Uncle Pete, uh, and it stuck to me like I don't know what. Hmm. And there's lots of them. They don't even know my right name. Already, <laughs> one time a guy was looking for me down here. He was looking for Wilbur Desley. Nobody knew. <laughs> <laughs> this one guy, this one guy, he said, you know, he said he could be looking for Bob. So this guy kind of he gave them a description. Hmm. He said, yeah, that's the guy. He said, you're not looking for Wilbur, you're looking for Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy comes here, I'm found, he said, hey, he said, I didn't know your name was Bob. <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, I had a heck of a time to find you. He said, yeah. He Wonder said, why, why would that be that way? I, I don't know. It, it, uh, it was something, somebody called you something and that was it. Hmm. It pinned it on you and, and, and it stayed with it. All your with life, you. yeah. And sometimes yeah. it wasn't very uh, very kind either, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, well, Goose, why would they call her Goose? Yeah. So I don't know uh, why they did. Did everyone in your family have nicknames? Or? Well, the, most of them, yeah. yeah. Most of the people had nicknames. Well, I, I think of Uncle, like Uncle, Uncle John. His name was uh, John. Everybody called him Thomas. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. see, that's the Christian side. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. See, Thomas is the Christian yeah. side. Of the Edward, everybody call him Edward. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like Edward. Edward. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. that that that's the Christian side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the name too, eh? Yeah. Like that. My brother Tommy too. He was called Tom Tom. Eh? Tom Tom, right? I remember yeah. that Tom Tom. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the Christian side. Uh huh. <coughs> Brother John, he was called Sonny. Yeah. I remember. Well, Sonny. Grandma, like you know. Grandma's name was Emerence, and everybody called her Meras. Yeah. 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 You know, there's one. I, 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 you know, I, the, the same with me. I didn't know who Meras is right. There? <laughs> For years. For years. There yeah. it is. God, I used to go down there. He used to go and visit me huh. and the wife. And, uh, she sing the, these Cree songs for us, you know, and like uh, uh, you know, I, I can just kick myself yet uh, that I didn't get her to teach me, huh? Because it's it's not that hard. It's it looks hard, but once once somebody uh, reads that to you, it doesn't take long. You mm -hmm. can read it, that Cree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because up north there in La Paul, I went to a few funerals there. And the funerals there, they, 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 they sing for four hours straight. 
and and that's all creasy, all in creasy. Mm -hmm. It'd be swampy creek there too. Yeah, yeah the yeah. swampy creek. Yeah, and 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 this guy, I was there. <laughs> I well, I was kind of lost, you know. And so this guy that was sitting next to me, a guy by the name of Albert uh, Valentine, he said, "Mom," he said. Do you know how to read that? They said, no, I've got a clue. Okay, he said, when they start singing, he said, the next one I'll show you. So he, they started singing the next song. They just opened the front page, and they start there. And they don't go through. Mm -hmm. And then when they finish that page, you turn it over, you sing all these songs. They, they go through the book that way. And, and when he finished that song, so they started singing the next one. He he followed with his, mm -hmm. with his finger, and all those words, they're, they're right there. <laughs> they're, they're up there in Cree, eh? Uh -huh. Yeah, he stuck, he, uh, he uh, 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 like the God, eh, you know, uh, There's lots, lots of uh, like uh, you can pick them out after. It's it's really it's it's really something. But uh, and I never did get grandma to to teach me. And what I should have done at that time, I should have got her to teach me that song they used to sing, her Nanti Mariah hmm. at Christmas time. That, that Mariah, I remember that everybody used to. She was kind of, must have been kind of a wild woman or something at one point, because I know everybody used to Mariah. Everybody that was sort of a. I know my my dad and others used to talk about oh Mariah crazy Mariah or something. Was she kind of an eccentric woman? Ah uh, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, huh? uh, from what I remember of her, she was pretty old already. Okay, okay. Yeah. What I was, what she was young, she was. Like to laugh. At Yes. Have fun. Yes. I think that's what, you know. And there is lots of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like years ago, they say laughing is one of the best medicines you yes. can get in the world. Right. So, I I could see years ago there, those guys were all pretty healthy. Uh -huh. Oh, hell, you can hear those guys laughing. Well, the most yeah. laughing person I can remember was uh, Seraphine. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. she was a laugher. Yeah, and the old, my old mother. Yeah. Was. Laugh. Holy smokes. Yeah, you can always tell when she was around. Yeah. How come our people were so religious too, Bob? You know, any, well, any it's, thoughts on that? It's it, it, it was it it's it was terrible actually, you know, to think about it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Calvin. Because did you know that Ernie Skinner went with my my <laughs> our our great great aunt for two years? No idea, no. Yes. No. Right. Yes. And religion broke them apart. Is that right, eh? When the nuns found out in Librette here that those that girl was moving with Ernie Skinner, they picked her up and her sister, they took them down to Winnipeg. Is that right? They put her in a convent. Yes, Is in that Winnipeg. Right? Yeah. 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 They didn't want nothing to do with that Protestant. Hmm. Yeah. Is that right, eh? Yes. Well, Ernie Skinner would, 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 would have probably married her, you uh -huh. know, because... As you, they're yeah. going together. We've all been wealthy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we could have we could have all got a piece of that raisin pie <laughs> instead of the crumbs. <laughs> but uh, but you know that that's that's how religion was, uh, you know, at one time. And and like like you say, years ago. Oh boy, oh boy, you miss mass. It was a terrible mm -hmm. sin. Oh, the, oh God, the, uh, you know, Satan was uh, waiting for you at the door there if you go out. He's going to grab you and <laughs> take you away, you know, if you didn't go to church. You know, and, and that's how, how the people uh, respected their religion. But the thing was, I think, it had that it probably had a lot to do with the priests and oh, very nonsense much so, very stuff. Much so, you know, yeah. they really, really uh, brainwashed the yeah. people. Eh? Well, you know, I uh, sort of 
over the years, listen, listen to stories and stuff. I heard like our people were uh, like a good source of cheap labor to the church. Oh, they, Jesus! They, they were a, they were a built-in flock. They didn't have to go anywhere else. Yeah. Our people had. Uh, well, our people our built, built that that church in Le Brett, you know. Uh, yeah, I heard that. Yes. They built yeah, it like free labor. labor. That was volunteer yes, labor. Yes, that's all yeah. volunteer labor. Yeah, yeah. All the rocks there. Yeah. You know, you know who, who who split all those rocks? No. Our uh, our well, well let's see, our uncle, I guess. Leo uh, Patra's dad. Oh God. Old Zachary Patra. Oh my. Is that right, eh? Yes. And the old uh, Joe Desley hauled all those rocks up with a with a chin chin pole there. Oh really? With a horse. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Joe Desley wow. told me that himself. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Old, he said that old guy used to split the rocks. He said, not put them on this thing. He said, not pull them up. Huh. He said, the guys. I was setting them up there. Right. He said we would pull the rock off and they'd send the basket back down. Yeah. He'd put another one in there, hmm. pull her up. He said finally that horse, he said, was so smart. He said, I'd, I'd just tell him, he said, I'd, he'd tell him, you know, the horse would go, whoa. And then he'd back up, he said. Oh, he knew his business. He said, huh? yeah, you need back up, he said. And then when he's far enough, I'd say, whoa. He'd stop, he said, and then I'd give him a little chirp, he uh -huh. said, and away you go, he said. <laughs> yeah, he'd go to work there all day with me, he said. I didn't have to drive him at all, he said. He just worked like a man, he said, uh -huh. just like yeah. another man. <laughs> but it, it was uh, really, uh, but I, like, I, I got to go back and say that, the people years ago, those old people, they were a long cry from being stupid out yeah. there. Those people were smart. They were smart in their own way. Like, you know, old grandma uh, there, she used to go out and, and uh, they used to make, my mom used to make clothes all the time. Eh? Mm -hmm. I didn't buy any clothes till I was about 15 years old. My mother made all of my our clothes. And uh, mother used to make clothes and then grandma came one time he said, you know Florence, we should get some dye. He said, no dye this, some of these shirts of yours. He says, so they'll look different, you know, <laughs> <laughs> instead of being all the same. Uh -huh. And uh, and they went out and she put these flowers in a, in a little pot and she boil it. And I asked her, I say, what color is that cocoa? Oh, blue or yellow or green, you know. Sure as hell. That <laughs> <laughs> it come out. That, eh? that, that, you know. I said, well, he said the, 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 the different flowers huh. uh, mixed together, he said, we'll, we'll make that color. Huh. <laughs> Do you ever remember them making um, rugs or anything that they would oh, sell? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. My mother made dough. Years ago, that used to be a sort of source of income for Métis people, a lot of it. Like the, the white people, they'd take them to town, the white people would buy them. Mm -hmm. You know, for three, four dollars and that time, five dollars would buy uh, enough groceries to last a family of four a week, you mm -hmm. know. But at that time, like, like with, with uh, most of the families down the valley there anyway, that I knew, uh, they didn't buy very much of anything from the stores. They they got it all from Ernie Skinner or, or you know, uh, that money they had. Well, they they kind of kept it for other mm -hmm. things. See. Eh? So what kind of things would they make then? Oh, they they made all kinds of different patterns. Like they made round uh, rugs, uh, square ones, small ones, big ones. They made all different kind of. Were they all the braided rugs, or did they make hook rugs as well? Yeah, hook rugs okay. and braided rugs. Yeah, the 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 round ones were pretty well all uh, braided rugs, uh, but they also hooked those too. My mother used to be great for that. She used to draw flowers and make these flowers, and, and then uh, Grandma would come over and they'd make they'd dye all this clothes a certain color. And they'd use that to make rugs, thing. Yeah. 
What about, um, did the women ever do beadwork and silk embroidery and that type of thing? Embroidery, they did a lot. My mother did a lot of that. But uh, uh, beadwork, not not too much. There wasn't, no, there wasn't too much at all. Yeah. So what types of things would they embroider? Oh, uh, pillowcases and, and uh, you know, dresser scarves and, and uh, tablecloths and stuff. They made all their own. They never bought any. Did they sell those as well? Hey? Did they sell them as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. If somebody comes along and you say, Oh, God, that ever nice. And I'll give you two bucks for a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. And yeah. they make another one. Yeah. 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 Old, old uh, Coco Maras and, and Mom, they, you know, brothers who run back and forth there. Yeah. Exchanging. <laughs> Exchanging. Uh, uh, what they used to call guineas. Guineas? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's stuff they use for hooking drugs. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Huh.